I'm David Coughlin, and I'm from Dublin, and I teach at Trinity College, Dublin. And I work in the area of action research and have published and uh, I'm on the editorial board of several action research journals. So people ask, what is action research? Well, I suppose there are lots of different definitions of action research because action research is a very wide and diffuse uh, field of activity. It's found in businesses and in communities. And each of those settings has, and around the world, and each of those settings has its own, I suppose, way of defining and understanding and implementing action research. We then design, implement, and evaluate that action, and at the same time, reflect on how it's going and try to generate knowledge out of that particular experience of trying to do and address that particular issue. So action research is really about action and research. Most research is about creating knowledge only, but action research, as the term suggests, is really about trying to get action, achieve change in some pressing kind of issue that a, a group of people see as being relevant for them. And it's, and it's research with people. So in other words, the people who are engaged in, who feel the problem or feel the issue, are part of the design and the enactment and the evaluation. So it's a kind of a co-researching kind of group of people. For example, in Norway, a whole region which comprised of uh, local government, uh, the local university and the local industry working together on regional development. And that could involve hundreds and hundreds of people. Or I can think of a group of nurses in a ward or in a particular area of a hospital working together to improve a service. Or I can think of a manager trying to improve or create a new product or improve how a process, a particular product is delivered. So there's just no shortage of settings and issues on which action research cannot be implemented and enacted. I think this encyclopedia of action research is invaluable. Because of the diffuse and spread out nature of and settings in which action research is undertaken, to actually track down and try to get a, pic a picture of the whole field of action research would involve looking and searching through multiple journals and books. So the encyclopedia is bringing everything into one place. So all the traditions of action research are represented in terms of how the different philosophies, the different methods, the different settings, and the different biographies of the different people who have shaped it, they're all together in these two volumes. So this is consolidation's field, not to close it down or tie it up, because action research is so dynamic, you can never tie it down. It's always developing and always changing. But it's a key resource, really. It's an essential resource for people who don't know anything about action research, so they can open the encyclopedia, they can pick up very basic uh, entries and see what these tell them about action research, or different aspects of it, or different fields within it or the person who already knows something about action research and wants to go into more depth on a particular aspect of, of the thing. So each entry, for example, describes succinctly what that aspect of action research is about. It provides links to other entries in the encyclopedia and it also provides a short list of further readings for the reader who wishes to go more deeply into that particular topic. I suppose I have to admit I've never done anything that's on this scale before. I mean, there's 316 thereabouts entries in this in this encyclopedia, and I began to find out and learn about parts of action research that I never heard of. There were words I didn't even recognise because I'm in the organisational end of action research, so I know about action research in organisations, whether they're businesses, uh, healthcare, education, social work. But action research in indigenous communities who are engaging in action research around issues of social exclusion, human rights, education, that's a whole world that I was not familiar with. And I really learned so much about that aspect of action research that I didn't know already. As I say, this was a long project, very complex with 316 entries. And my co editor and I, uh, we initially brought, contacted a lot of our friends, a lot of the people we know who are 
have high expertise in action research. And we asked them to brainstorm what the topics should be that should be included in this action, in this encyclopedia. And we consolidated that list, it changed, things came in, things were put out. And then each of those members of our editorial team, then they contacted people that they knew and asked them to write entries. And then they worked with those authors who are practitioners as well as scholars in the field and worked with them as editors and helped them write and rewrite. And my co-editor, Mary Brighton Miller, is just a superstar. She's a leading expert on action research in relation to uh, education, justice, feminism, and has published it out herself. And working with her, because she, because she came from another aspect of action research than I do, then between the two of us then we combined and worked very well together. Uh, she's a lovely person and just terrific to work with. And while it was hard work over four years, we had great fun and we've become great friends. This would not have worked without the great support from SAGE because it's really SAGE of taking a lead in promoting action, developing action research as it's used across the world in business courses, nursing courses, healthcare, social work, education, nursing. Uh, and that has been, this would not have happened without really the hard work and the foresight and the vision that SAGE have about developing the academic and practical field of action research.